Hi there everyone, it's Alex from Drummer Artista for Studios. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I do the tail section of an originally designed broom to go along with my Wizarding World stuff that I do for Harry Potter. So to begin this project, I started with just doing some concept sketches on paper. So here are my concept sketches that I did. You can see up here I have the original profile for the Nimbus 2000. The second design I came up with, I called the Clean Sweep 2. And now the third one, which I really liked, is what I decided to call the Tomet, Comet 260. And this is the one that I'm going to be making. So from having this rough sketch, I figured out how tall I want the broom to be, and then went into AutoCAD and drew a two-scale drawing of the broom. Printed it out and taped it together, and this is going to be my pattern for making the broom. You can see that in the tail section, I've gone and put lines throughout the entire section that are spaced about half an inch apart. This is so that I know the diameter of that section so I can cut out circles in EVA foam. Each one of these will be a different circle, and I'll probably end up having to make extras to fill the overall length because I know the foam can vary in width depending on how it was manufactured and at what time it was manufactured. But this is roughly how many discs of foam I'll have to make. And then I'll use a two inch section of foam here for the collar, just so that it's got a single piece and all that. But the next step for me now is to cut all of these discs out and start gluing them together. the completed tail section. It was made out of what I'm calling billets. There were three of them. I did this section, a middle section, and then the upper section of it as separate pieces and then glued them together. Running through the center of it, I have a one inch Schedule 40 PVC with a uh, collar on the end of it. That's to give it some rigidity, something to hold all the foam together and then it gives a section for the handle to be able to slide down into so that it can disassemble for travel. You can see up here that they overhang each other as they get larger and then smaller. Down here, I've already gone, I trim it out like this to get it to a, a more round, even shape. And then I come in with a sander and refine everything to make it nice and smooth. So right now what I'm gonna do is come back in with my razor knife and continue these rough cuts to smooth everything out so that it's a more uniform shape and doesn't have all the different levels from the discs. Together, the next step is to sit down and sand it to even everything out and smooth it. To do that, I'm going to be using an oscillating sander. This I found actually does work very good. I just have to make sure I use nice long strokes with it, and it works very well. I'm going to be using an 80 grit sanding pad because I still want a little bit of a texture to this because it will help finish it to make it look like wood. Now, because this kicks up a lot of particles when you're doing it, 
you're going to want to wear a respirator because breathing in the particles and fumes from this stuff can be very caustic. So you don't want to breathe any of that in. So you will need to wear a respirator whenever you're sanding. So let's get the sanding done. finished sanding it but as you can see looking at it there are some spots where it did not completely glue together I'm not too worried about them not being perfectly level because I want this to look like wood and I don't want it to be a nicely 100% finished refined sanded down piece I wanted to have some issues with it so I'm going to come back in and just fill these gaps using a dap quick seal I just get a little bit in and smooth it over to fill in the gaps. So I've applied two coats of the quick seal to fill up some of these larger gaps. I'm now going to start trying to burn the texturing for the twigs into this. To do that, I'm going to be using a wood burner with adjustable tips. You can also do it with a soldering iron. But because we're using heat on this, it's going to produce some fumes. So you need to make sure you wear a respirator and preferably still do it in a well-ventilated area. I'm out in the garage so that I have plenty of airflow in addition to wearing the respirator. Let's get the respirator on and uh, get to work. So the areas that have the quick seal on it is taking a little bit more heat to cut through it but it's still going through absolutely fine and is not ruining where I put that on to seal it up. So this looks like it's working pretty well and I not even the extra heat from this is actually rolling the edge over a little bit so by leaving the spaces gapped a little bit more like this it's actually going ahead and rolling over the edge of it, so I don't think I'll have to come back in and do any more texturing to that. I'll just have to put the Mod Podge on it to give it the twig uh, texture from the strokes. Now you can notice when I'm doing this, because I've got the angled tip, I'm having to be sure to keep it pretty much vertical to just get that cutting blade to go through there. finished doing the texturing on the side of the broom took a uh, quite a bit of time using the wood burner to be able to do all that now it's time for me to do the end of it to make it look like the bottoms of all the twigs that have been bunched together uh, all I'm doing is I'm, I switched to a different uh, tip on the wood burner so it's a pointed tip instead of a chisel tip that I was using for the sides and all I'm doing is a series of circles that I have to go and cover this entire thing in that series of circles so it's again going to be a very time consuming process, but it will go fairly quickly with the wood burner. So you can see here, all I'm doing is just using the tip of this burner and just creating a series of lines and circles to create the texture on the end of the broom. And once you get it hung together, it starts to look like that. So when it's all done, it will, it will kind of look like the texture from a bundle of twigs. Once it's all painted and everything, it will look a lot better, look more like a broom. But it's just going to be that whole process for a very long time to be able to fill a roughly 8 or 9 inch diameter circle. So 
I've got all the texturing on the bottom of the, the tail end finished. Texturing over the rest of it's also finished. So from here, the next step is going to be to seal it before I get the priming and painting done. But that's going to be saved for a later video. This one was just on building the tail section here. So uh, stay tuned and uh, make sure you catch the next video where we will be working on building the handle for this broom, which will be a collapsible handle so that this can go into a very compact space. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.